I was actually only um, well, about 50, almost 52, 51 years old. I started to occasionally notice this twitch in my right hand, right arm. And if I were, there was a lot of stress, I noticed that that was not a small twitch. It was a, quite, a, quite a big one. I was speaking in front of an audience at the company I was working for, you know, kind of using my hands as I spoke. And I noticed at one point, I looked out at the audience and all of the eyes were on my right hand. No one was looking at my, me, they were all looking at my right hand because it was really shaking. So then it wasn't that long after that someone actually came into my office, told me to go see this neurologist. And um, he, he was a wonderful guy. And he said to me, he said, well, when I came into the room, I thought I was coming in to diagnose a brain tumor because you're pretty young for anything else. But I think you have Parkinson's. And I found the whole thing kind of earth shattering. Of course, I cried for hours. <laughs> Ultimately, I ended up here at University Hospitals and I'm very glad I did. I first met Christine in 2016, um, and at that point she had had Parkinson's for about seven years or so, and she had significant resting tremor. Uh, that was one of her predominant symptoms. Um, but unfortunately, so she took medication and that would help it to a certain degree, but the medications wouldn't last long enough. So she was on this roller coaster with medications kicking in and wearing off. Um, and, um, you know, she was a relatively young woman. And so it wasn't that long after I met Christine the first time that we started talking about deep brain stimulation. I just kept thinking about that fact that I didn't really have to have this tremor. I didn't, I wasn't proving anything. I mean, one of the most simple things I could not do was very easily make my bed in the morning or just brush my teeth easily. Just, I am not only couldn't write, I couldn't really keep track of my calendar very well. I was getting very scattered. My um, son and daughter-in-law had a beautiful baby girl and I couldn't pick her up. I wanted to. I truly, really, really wanted to hold my granddaughter, but no one felt comfortable with me doing it. And that, oh, that was just heartbreaking. I had very poor balance at that point. And if I were to turn in a certain direction, and I myself could not tell you when that would happen, I would suddenly lose my balance, and and that, and that was a risk for everyone. I, I completely lost any degree of optimism I ever had in life, any enthusiasm I had. Part of that I blame on the sheer lack of dopamine. The other part I blame on just the disappointment that comes your way when you are no longer able to participate in life the way that it matters. I just didn't have the energy or the enthusiasm or the ability to, to participate in things. And um, that drove me to a lot of a feeling of isolation. And that's debilitating. I think isolation can really truly debilitate a person for whatever reason that they are isolating. We all need people. We could give her more medication, but I think, you know, the way the field is moving is that we're moving DBS, the needle, from an advanced therapy for advanced Parkinson's disease more to, a moder to modest or moderate Parkinson's disease. And so I think, you know, we're moving the needle up to the point where it's um, not just about, you know, how long have you had Parkinson's, the total daily doses you take, but how much is it impacting your quality of life? So the way deep brain stimulation, um, the best way to think about it is that it's a pacemaker for the brain, just like a pacemaker for the heart. There are these abnormal brain rhythms and the brain neurons are communicating in this abnormal rhythm and this stimulator comes in and breaks that signal um, and that kind of restores a more normal brain rhythm or if you want to think about it as a more normal way for the neurons to communicate with each other. Um, and so that's kind of the science behind um, how we think the DBS works. Again, it doesn't cure Parkinson's disease, but it's good at treating stiffness, slowness, tremor the motor fluctuations, which are the ups and downs that uh, people experience in symptoms, um, and then dyskinesias, those wiggly movements. After the surgery, I almost couldn't quite believe it. It's just like all a joke or something. Did I, this is a bad joke or a bad dream or what, you know, that I actually had that disease and maybe it's gone. Well, now I'm realizing it's not gone. It is definitely not gone, but, um, but I can do more with it now than I could before. Certainly a big source of pleasure for me as a hobby in my lifetime has always been art, you know, drawing. And uh, okay, I saw my granddaughter this morning. That's great, that's a good day already. I heard a woman say once that having grandchildren was like watching your heart walk around in front of you. <laughs> and it's very true, it's very, very true. So I get to have the pleasure of that now. DBS has been a real game changer, it's changed my life. Um, 
I can do things. I feel like I've re-entered life in many ways. 